If you never installed or used Stable Diffusion, there is the hard way doing it through Python that I've tried two times without success and the easy way through Comfy UI. So I'll show you how to install Comfy UI and show you how easy it really is. I'll show you how to install stable diffusion models so you can generate images, how to use custom nodes to make stable diffusion more powerful. And by the end of this video, I'll show you how to install the highest quality models so you can get ultimate control. Just follow this tutorial step by step so you can install and use stable diffusion. Step number one, install Comfy UI. So just write Comfy UI into Google search and click the first link. By the way, every single link is down in the description. Now, the reason we want to use Comfy UI is it's a lot easier. The old way of getting stable diffusion would be to download through Python that somebody with very low technical knowledge would have a hard time doing. With Comfy UI, all you have to do is just download a couple of things and then it will work in this node base. Now you might be thinking, hey, this looks pretty complicated, man. But actually when you get into it, it's so simple. And I'll explain everything to you in a later step. So how do we install? Well, all you need to do is scroll down a little bit and you will go to the installing here. Just click on direct link to download and you will start downloading. This one is around 1.4 gigabytes. So just wait for it to install. Now just go through your downloads folder until you find this file, which is a zip file, right? Click on it. Click on extract all and extract. Then you will get this folder. I recommend that you cut it away from the downloads folder, go to documents, make a new folder named AI and paste it in here. This will make it easier for the later steps. Now let's double click it. And here there are two run files that you need to look out for. The first one is run CPU and the second one is run Nvidia GPU. And this is important if you have an Nvidia graphics card. The model we're gonna run today needs around eight gigabytes of VRAM. And if you're running a Mac with M1, 2 or 3, I've left a link in the description to download it on Mac as well. It's a little bit different, but you can still get it to work. But how do you find out how much VRAM you have? Well, just click Windows R and write DXDAG Click OK, click on Yes, and you can now see what you are working with. Just click on the display in the top, and you can see I have the AMD Radeon graphics that only has 400 megabytes of VRAM, and I have my GPU, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 laptop with eight gigabytes of VRAM. So check your requirements before you continue. So now that you know, we can just click on run NVIDIA GPU. It will, for you, install a bunch of packages. So it will take a little bit of time. But for me, what happens is it opens the Comfy UI in my web browser. But the main issue is that if you've done every single step now, you won't actually have any models here that you can use to generate an image. So that's why. Stop taking meeting notes, let AI do it for you. Just get TLDV for free and it works inside of Zoom, Google Meet and Teams. I just had this short meeting. Now I can summarize main ideas, create a list of next action steps or even generate sales rep performance report. You can even provide a custom prompt and generate. We just got an instant summary. You can also use the AI report builder if you have multiple meetings with one client and summarize all of them. Then you can schedule this to happen recurringly. You get your AI report that you can schedule to happen every Friday that then integrates with your favorite tools from Slack to HubSpot. Download TLDV by clicking the link in the description down below and put AI into your meetings. Thanks to TLV for sponsoring this video. So that's why we're gonna go to step number two, install Stable Diffusion. The first thing we're gonna download is the Stable Diffusion XL Base 1.0. Again, links to all of them are in the description below. And all you need to do is go down and download this one called Save Tensors. Now the file size is quite high on this. So depending on your internet speed, this might take some time. For me, it took around 30 minutes and all you need to do is click on this download file. Now I'll show you actually a better model that I like more, but 
this is the original stable diffusion base. So if you want the raw unfiltered base, this is the one to get. Now, the second thing you need to download is the stable diffusion refiner. So I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit and here you see the same thing happen. We're gonna download the first one, save tensor and click on this download button. Again, this is six gigabytes, so it might take some time. The last thing is the SDXL V. Once again, just start scrolling down and let's download this one. A little lower file size on this, just click the download file. And if you're downloading all these models now, I would recommend also downloading this Think Diffusion XL model that I'll show you later in this video. But if you're, but if you're following step-by-step, step, I highly recommend to Follow the link in the description and download this as well. Once the files are downloaded, I need to show you where to put them. So let's imagine these are the files. I'm just gonna cut them. Then we go inside of the AI documents, click on Comfy UI, then click on Models, then click Checkpoints. This is where you're going to paste the base and the refiner. Now we only have the VA file left. So I'm going to cut that away from this folder, go back one step to the models again, then scroll down until we find VA. Now just paste your VA in here. If you've come this far, you're doing amazing. All you need to do is step number three, generate the image. Now that everything is installed, we just click on run NVIDIA GPU again. This screen will load for a bit and then you'll open this in your Chrome. If it doesn't open automatically, just take this HTTP link and copy and paste it to your browser. Now let's the fun begin. And if you think this looks very complicated, it really isn't. And once you get a hang of it, maybe you'll actually like this a lot better than other interfaces. But let's start at the beginning where we load a checkpoint. Since you loaded them into the model folder before, you can see that they are now here, the base and the refiner. So we'll just use the base. Now you can see this clip path goes up to this clip text encode prompt. This is the positive prompt or basically what you want it to make. So let's go simple red apple. Right below it, you have the negative prompt. This is things that you don't want to be in the image. So you could say blur, noise, and things like this. Now here you see the image you will generate. I have it set to 1280 by 720 and the batch size is four, meaning I'll generate four images. I'm gonna put it on one because it's faster to generate. Then we go over to the actual K sampler. This is what actually creates your image. The recommended settings is to go the older sample name steps between 20 and 30. CFG, I like around eight to 10 and the rest I keep on default. Now we can create our first image by just clicking this Q prompt. Now you'll see it starts loading with a green kind of stroke around it. Sometimes this might load for a while and that's when you can take up this terminal and it will see that it's trying to fetch some data right now. And sometimes you might even have to install some stuff. So just be patient, let it load. And now it moved to the next step where it's actually reading our prompt. It then has moved to the K sampler and you will soon start to see a bar in the top start to fill. As you can see, it's downloading some things. And just like that, our first image is generated. The first one always takes a little longer. Let's try another prompt, like a man showing an iPad to the camera and let's Q prompt again. This time will be a lot faster and depending on how many images you are generating and the file size, this will take shorter or longer. Just like that, it goes into the VA decode and we get the new image. As you can see, this is the quality that you get from the base model. And if you're used to prompting inside of ChatGPT, it takes a little bit of a different prompting style. But let me show you some good results with my favorite model in a minute. Just one more example, like a gorgeous Viking woman at the top of the mountain. Q prompt, it's loading again. And here is the final image. A woman that looks like she would carry you into bed. But is that all you can do with Comfy AI? And how do we actually get the best output? That's why we have step number four, Comfy UI Manager. Just go to the Comfy UI Manager on GitHub because this is where we're gonna install a bunch of add-ons and this is by far the easiest way to do it. 
just scroll a little bit down. And the first step is to get to the CD custom nodes terminal. As you can see, this is inside of Comfy UI, then custom nodes, then you just wanna right click and click on open terminal. As you can see, we're now running inside of the correct folder. Now just copy this git clone and paste it right in here. Click on enter and it will take a little bit to install. Now you can close it. Now we just go to comfy UI and click on restart. Now you can see that we have this manager button in the bottom right. And the most important button here is install custom nodes. As you can see, they have hundreds of different custom nodes that you can install to do different things for you. For example, if I search reactor, this is a node that I was playing with yesterday Today, the fast and simple roop like face swap extension node. So you can just click on install here. Then we can search for open pose where you can apply a pose of a character and then you'll actually render out that pose for the character. Once they're installed, you can now right click, add node, and you have your new nodes you downloaded here. For example, reactor you have three different nodes that you now have access to that have these inputs and outputs. For example, to use this fast face swap, they need an image. So we're gonna use this as the input image. We need to right click, add node image and load image where I'm gonna upload an image of my face, something like this put the image into the source image. Then in the save image, I'm just gonna drag over this one. Now we can change the prompt. We queue the prompt. You will now see that it's also having this green circle around it before. And here is the image we got. Yeah, we definitely need some prompting help. And I guess is this supposed to be me? That's why we go to the last step to get higher quality. Just go to civitai.com because this is where you can download a lot of custom models and get exactly what you're looking for. Just click on the models tab in the top, then we can filter by highest rated, most downloaded, and you'll see the top models here. I tested a bunch of them and I believe there is one thing that you should do before you start installing and that is to actually test them on Civit AI itself. Say you like this model, for example, instead of downloading it being six gigabytes and taking a little bit of time, you can actually click on this run model and go to CART, which is a free image generator. And now you can just run the same prompt again by clicking here and test the entire model. I'm just gonna run it. And just like that, we tested the model even before downloading it so you can get higher quality images. This Think Diffusion XL, I'll leave in the description down below because it's my favorite. And once you've downloaded it, just put it into the models folder that we did for the base and the refiner. So you now know how to install and use Stable Diffusion. Like the video, see the description below, and I'll see you in the next video.